Hi guys, welcome to this practice that we have prepared for you today. I'm Courtney and this is Shaz. So we are doing an intermediate practice today. We are working towards the peak pose Surya Yantrasana, which is also known as Compass Sundial Pose. So we'll be working through a series of open, opening the hips, like lunges and stuff like that to really warm up the body for this pose. So we're just gonna have a little bit of fun with it no expectation everyone has their own challenge point so let's get straight into it starting in the center of our mat so you can come to a cross-legged position if that is comfortable for you sharon will be showing the modified versions throughout the practice but if you are able to this is called butterfly seated butterfly or also butterkanasana if that's too much for you you can place the blocks just underneath the knees just to give yourself a little bit more space to expand through the body making sure that we have the sitting bones grounding down elongating through the spine and once you feel comfortable you can allow your hands to rest in your lap or on your thighs or your knees whatever's comfortable for you beginning to close down the eyes if they're not so already and just beginning to tune into your breath observing it perhaps noticing if the inhale is longer than the exhale and just beginning to feel into that space And on your next inhale, we'll begin to breathe in through the nostrils. Hold at the top of the inhale for the count of four. And gently exhaling. Just allowing the exhalation to land where it needs to. Holding for the count of four. And let's just take three more cycles of breath like this. Try not to rush it in your own time. One more round. And once you reach your exhalation, you can begin to open the eyes. And I'd like you to accompany that rhythm of breath throughout the practice, breathing in and out through the nose. And we'll just remove the blocks if you were using them underneath the knees. Bending through the knees and we'll just hug the knees into chest, wrapping the forearms around one another, giving us ourselves a nice little hug and releasing the left hand behind us we'll take a nice gentle twist here opening through that left shoulder and eye gaze spins to the back of the room or close down the eyes if that feels good and on the exhale we gently release coming back into our cradle like position taking one breath here and on the exhale, we move over to the opposite side. Really nice. Trying to keep grounded down through both feet here. And exhale, release. Releasing your grip, we'll come back into our Bhadakanasana position extending the right leg out long so we're in a half butterfly position now still maintaining that nice vertic neutral spine we'll take our hands up to sky inhale breath and on the exhale we twist the torso to face the leg and gently leading with the heart not the chin begin to pour over the leg 
And just allow your forehead to rest on your shin and if it's not there, that's okay. One more breath here. And on the next inhale, we begin to peel up through the spine, reversing the action. Hands come down by our sides. Placing the right hand just on the inner edge of the big toe as we come into a side bend here. Still breathing in and out through the nose. And breathing through the left hand side of the body. One more breath. And exhale, release. Changing sides, so it's the right heel that comes into the groin. Preparing ourselves, setting ourselves up, hands to sky, inhale, breath. Exhale, twist through the torso and allow the belly to melt over the left leg. Holding here. And on the next inhale, we slowly come back up, reset, hands by our sides. Taking that left hand now by the left leg, coming into your side bend. Exhale to release. Extending both legs out long now, we're gonna come into a nice forward fold. So the sitting bones won't need to move much. So still in the same position though, if you need to shuffle around so that both equally distributed onto the mat, feel free to do so. So we're gonna creep forward with the fingertips and we're aiming for the heart to come as close to the earth as possible. This might not be possible. So if you do need to place a block, just underneath the chest, you're more than welcome to do so. And you also have the option to have the forehead to the block as well. And just allow the head to hang heavy. And if you do have any neck issues, you can floss the neck from side to side if that feels good for you. Flexing through the feet here, making it a little bit more active. So we're flexing the toes to the shins. And we'll be here for three breaths. One more breath. And on the exhale, carefully coil up the spine. Reset in your neutral position, placing the block over to the side if you are using that for that part of the practice. And we'll come into deer pose now. So we're in a 90-90 setup. So the right shin is facing forward in this 90 degree position and the left leg is on the side of the mat. Okay, so we're set up in our deer pose and Sharon's gonna modify using her hand. So we're gonna go into a swivel-like motion. So basically keeping the sitting bones where they are and turning to the other side. So if you can resist using the hands, it'll be a little bit more challenging but it'll become easier. We're gonna do five more rounds of that. Inhale, breath. And you might find yourself going a little bit off center like I am, and that's fine. Just working through a bit of hip mobility here. Three more rounds. Last one. And we're gonna pause on this side. And on the inhale breath, we'll begin to peel ourselves up and exhale, release back down. Four more rounds. Inhale to rise, exhale to release. How's that feeling, Sharon? It's good. Yeah? Yeah. You like it? One more, I, I might have done an extra one, but hey, if it feels that good, it's okay. And over to the other side. Stay for the in-breath. 
exhale to rise, hold, release, five rounds. And just take it in your own time, always noticing one side is always going to be different to the other. Two more rounds. Last one, and release back down. Really nice, guys. So we're just gonna hug those knees back into the chest for a moment. Stay for the in-breath, and you might like to sigh out the exhale, lion's breath. And with a soft gaze, or your eyes closed if they're not so already, We'll move into a four point kneel, setting up the cat cow. So making sure that our shoulders are tracking over the wrists, our hips are over our knees. We're pushing the earth away with the palms, neck is in line with the spine. And on the next inhale, we begin to drop the belly. Eye gaze to sky if you prefer to keep them open. And on the exhale, we arch through the back, hollowing out the rib cage. Angry cat. My cat, my cat is very angry. Are you an angry cat today? I am an angry cat today. No, I'm not, I'm not really, but maybe I am, I don't know. I won't be after this. And I always encourage you guys to be intuitive with the movement in your cat cow. So if there's any other way of moving you'd like to take, whether that's rotating through the ribs, the hips, and just allowing the breath to guide you in this movement. You might like even to sit down on the heels for a moment, take a nice little wrist stretch, fingertips face the knees, and doing so like Sharon is, being very sensual in the movement. Almost as if you're moving through honey. And let's just take another three cycles of breath here. With whatever you've chosen to do. And we'll meet back in the four point meal position. One more breath. So we're back in our tabletop now. And always just taking a moment to reset, making sure that all 10 fingers are equally spread, still pushing the earth away. And on the inhale, we begin to take that right hand to sky. Shoulders in line with the wrist, energetically pulling away with the fingertips. And on the exhale, we thread the needle through. So the right shoulder head is pressing to the earth, spinning that left shoulder away. And we have an option for a bind here. So taking that left hand and wrapping it around the back, and those fingertips may or may not wedge themselves in between the hip and the thigh crease. And you'll notice the more you wrap around, the more open you become through the chest, widening through the collarbones. And just breathing through that side body. One more breath here. And on the exhale, you gently release the bind if you've chosen to take it. And always coming back through the stages that we entered. Slowly coming up, right hand rises back to sky. Exhale, release. We're back in our four point kneel. Take a breath here. Next inhale, opposite side, left hand to sky. Exhale to release, threading the needle. And we're also planting the left ear to earth here as well. Take one breath here, and if you did so on the other side, take the bind. And just always breathing into the space 
where you feel the most intensity. So focusing your awareness there. One more breath. Exhale, release the bind. Slowly coming back up through center, left hand reaches to sky, rinsing out the action. Exhale, release, four point kneel. One breath here. And let's sit down on the heels and take a nice quick child's pose. And you can make it a little bit more active here if you like by coming up on the base of each finger. Just like Sharon is doing, really nice. And you might like to massage the forehead from side to side. One more breath. Exhale, planting the palms down. Slowly lifting up through the chest. Coming up through the knees and meeting in our downward facing dog. And because it's our first downward facing dog for the practice, I'd like a bit more of a generous bend in the knees and you can begin to walk out your dog. So one heel lifts, the other one plants back down. Same positioning here for your downward facing dog, like our four point kneel, shoulder width distance and our feet are hip width distance as well. One more breath. Shifting those heels back. And on your next inhale, we look to the hands. And if you're ready for it, you can practice the jump to our halfway lift or just take a nice little walk to the top of the mat. Meeting in Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift and lengthening through the spine. Exhale to fold. And just allow the juiciness of this inversion for a moment. And you might like to take a rag doll position, grabbing opposite elbows, or perhaps wrapping the arms around the back of the legs, just allowing the head to hang heavy here, ridding yourself of any activity of the mind. And on the next exhale, we drop the hands, framing the feet, slowly peeling up through the spine. Head is the last thing to arrive, meeting in our Tadasana mountain pose. And we're going to speed things up a little bit now. So we're going to take a few rounds of Surya Namaskar A. I was enjoying that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, nothing, nothing does. Now we're standing now. Don't worry, not for long. All right, inhale breath, hands to sky. Hands in prayer, slight back bend, shifting the hips forward, exhale, release, and we're back in our forward fold. Inhale to rise, halfway lift, stepping the left foot back, high to low plank, and you can come down on your knees here if that feels good for the modified version or go straight through your chaturanga easy cobra or up with facing dog sharon's demonstrating the easy cobra and then we roll back on the toes downward facing dog reset always taking at least one breath through each transition if you can and exhale bend through the knees yogi's choice to step or hop to the top of the mat halfway lift Exhale to fold. Inhale, reset, upward hands, hands in prayer. Exhale, melt those hands by our sides. Round two. In breath. Exhale to release, forward fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttarasana, stepping the opposite foot back this time, right foot, high to low plank, going through your chaturanga, upward facing dog. 
downward facing dog. One breath here. Bending through the knees, eye gaze forward, step or hop to the top of the mat. Halfway lift, exhale to fold. Inhale to rise. And hands come down into heart centre. Let's just take a pause here for a moment. And just uh, bringing awareness into our breath once again, re-establishing that connection. And if there is an intention you would like to set for yourself, perhaps offering up your effort, could be to anything, a person, a place, an idea, a concept. And just holding that close to you. And on the exhale breath, we release the hands. Inhale to rise, hands in prayer. Exhale to fold. And we'll meet in the downward facing dog. However you'd like to get there, if you'd like to practice the jump back through Chaturanga, planting the palms down, generous bend in the knees. Landing with bent elbows, really nice. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Okay guys, so we're just gonna shift that right foot just a little bit closer to our left big toe. And on your next in breath, we'll lead with the heel and take that left foot to sky. So we're in three-legged dog, Inhale, tiger curl the knee into chest. Step the foot between the palms, deliver the right knee to the mat. We're in a low lunge. Taking our hands up above head. Exhale, release the hands, clasp them to the back of the sacrum, so the base of the tailbone. And just shifting those hips just a little further forward, just deepening in that stretch. Knuckles are shifting to the back of the mat. Exhale, release, framing the front foot, moving into half split, half Hanuman. So we're just gonna take a few rounds of that movement. So on the inhale, we rise back into our low lunge, taking the hands in a clasp, Opening through the shoulders. Exhale, release, half Hanuman. Another four just like that. In your own time. I always find it's nice to close down the eyes once we know where we're going. Just test your stability here and just really feel the movement as well. The last two. And we'll meet back in our lunge position. And we'll take both hands to the left knee now. So we're still nice and straight through the spine, eye gaze forward. And we'll move into a quad stretch now. So we'll bend through that right knee, flexing the foot. And if it's available for you today, taking that right hand up overhead, looking back, catching the ankle or the outer edge of the sole of the foot. And Sharon is catching her ankle here. And just go to your challenge point here. Don't force anything. Just feel where that nice stretch is. Breathing in and out through the nose. Be here for another three breaths. One more breath. And avoiding that 
slingshot motion, release the grip, moving back into half Hanuman, countering that action. Inhale to rise. Moving into lizard lunge now, so you might need to shift that left foot just to the outer edge of the mat to give yourself more space. Now, Sharon's gonna demonstrate the modified version by keeping the knee to the ground. However, if you want a little bit more, you can hover that right knee off the earth, shifting the heel back. And if you want a little more coming down on the forearms or using a block, allowing the head to hang heavy here and still flossing that neck from side to side if that feels good. If you want even more than this, coming on the blade edge of the pinky toe of the left foot. I'm just feeling that nice stretch. You might even like to push the side of the left knee out with the left hand. Eye gaze might spin over the left shoulder. We'll be here for another three breaths. And just be wherever you are today. Always noticing the quality of mind, quality of breath especially in these deeper poses. They can bring up many things for us. And it could just be frustration today. <laughs> <laughs> One more breath. Exhale, carefully releasing wherever you are, allowing the right knee to land. If you have taken that variation, Shifting that left foot back into center, coming through your low lunge. Pause for a moment. Stay for the in-breath and on the exhale, making your way back to downward facing dog. Whether you'd like to take a vinyasa or if you'd like to move straight into downward facing dog, it's completely up to you. Straight into the opposite side, guys. So shifting that left foot just a little bit towards that right big toe. On the in-breath, leading with the heel. Right leg to sky, squaring the hips to the mat. Tiger curl. Step the foot between the palms. Deliver the left knee to the earth. Coming into your low lunge. And you know where we're going now. Hands to sky. On the exhale, we clasp the hands to the sacrum, open chest. Exhale, release half Hanuman. And five rounds here in your own time. Last three here, and we'll all meet in at the lunge position. Last one, oh, that, was that a crack? <laughs> That's completely normal as well. Oh my lord, well, I must be doing something right, I hope. <laughs> Just releasing energy. Oh, releasing energy, all right. We're back in the lunge position, guys. So we're gonna take that quad stretch. So taking both hands to that right knee, setting yourself up. Now I know I'm a lot tighter on this side. I've also been doing a lot of running lately. So this is gonna be very painful. So bending through that left leg, and just taking whatever variation is available for you today. And making sure that your eye gaze is forward. We're still lengthening through the spine. We'll be here for another four breaths. So just be wherever you are today and be okay with that. Last two breaths. 
And on your next exhalation, slowly releasing the foot, making your way into your half Hanuman. Counter pose. And on the next inhale, we slowly come back up through center, shuffling that right foot to the right edge of the mat, setting up for our lizard lunge position. So whatever variation you took on the opposite side, planting the forearms down or using a prop, option to take that knee up off the mat, shifting the heel back, perhaps coming on the pinky toe blade edge of the right foot. Bringing your attention back to your breath now as you deepen into the pose. We'll be here for another four breaths. Last breath here. And on your next inhale, slowly coming back up wherever you are. Reversing the action carefully. Placing that back knee back down. We're in our lunge pose and making your way through your vinyasa or meeting in the downward facing dog. Whatever you'd like to do. Perhaps taking your rinse out. And we're going to move straight into our next flow now. So left leg rises to sky, three-legged dog. Inhale, tiger curl the knee into chest. Step the foot between the palms, crescent lunge. So you can place the hands on the hips here if you need to, just to make sure that the hips are square. And you're welcome to have a micro bend in that back knee if you find that you need a little bit more stability in the pelvis, but if you feel pretty good, hands to sky. And on the exhale, we're gonna shift forward, torso parallel to the earth, arrow head. Thumbs spinning up. Exhale, release back to crescent lunge. Four more rounds of this. Remaining active in that back leg. Two more, meeting back in crescent lunge. Hold in your crescent when you arrive. And on the exhale, we'll straighten through that front leg and move into extended pyramid pose. So that back foot is on a 45 degree angle now. So you should have heel to heel or heel to arch alignment, allowing the belly to fold over that left leg. And, oh, I just heard a crack as well. <laughs> what am I doing to us? And spinning that left hip back. So I had to think about my left and right then. And we'll be here for one breath. And on your next exhalation, looking to the back foot, and we'll pivot that to a parallel position, parallel to the back of the mat, setting up for Virabhadrasana, warrior two. Hands lengthen to either side, energetically pulling away from one another, making sure that right knee is tracking over the right ankle. And on the exhale breath, we flip the palm and we reverse our warrior. Our feet are still in the same position, still deep bend in that front leg. Exhale to release, moving into extended side angle pose. You can take a variation here by taking that left elbow to the left thigh. Or if you want a little bit more, you can take that left palm just by the big toe and the right fingers drape over the crown of the head. Spinning the heart to the sky, holding here. And there is an option for a bind, so you might like to take the half bind by taking that right hand and just making sure that you've got that nice open chest. Sharon's gone for the full bind here. 
So if you are taking that full bind, you take that left hand and you wrap it underneath the left thigh. And if it's there to catch, we stay for the in-breath. And on the exhale, we slowly release whatever bind you have chosen or if you haven't taken the bind, moving back through a lunge position. And it's okay if you need to shift here a little bit. All 10 toes spin to the pinky toe blade edge as we take that left hand up overhead for twisted skandhasana. So you might need to shift that left foot just in the center of the mat a little bit more so shift it down so you have more space to move through the hips stay for the in breath and on the exhale we sweep back into our lunge position moving into high scan dasana so we've got a deep bend in that right knee and the left toes are flexing to the shin and if you can go into a lower skandhasana, you're welcome. We are gonna move to sit on the mat. So if you do need a block underneath the sitting bones, Sharon will demonstrate. And just so I'm not facing the wrong way. I'm going to cue you through where we're gonna go. So we're gonna take that left hand, just like we practiced at the start of practice, and take it just by the big toe for a nice little side bend here. Good. And if it's available, you can take that right hand to catch the toes. And just allow, if you have got the catch, it's going to give you the ability to hold onto it and spin the torso more to the sky. And just be wherever you are. And on the exhale, release. And slowly come back up to your vertical neutral. And we're gonna go for another bind here as well. So just making sure we're really grounded down through that right foot. And if you're going for the bind, we'll take the right hand around the right shin. Take that left hand to sky and perhaps catch the right fingertips. Once again, peeling open through that left shoulder and you can use a strap here if you do have one or a towel, an extension cord. Be creative and be here for one more breath. And on the exhale, we release. Slowly coming back up through your Skandhasana position, walking your hands to the top of the mat. Left foot meets the right and you can go through your Vinyasa or meet in the downward facing dog. Pausing in your downward facing dog for a moment and it's always welcome if you need to take a child's pose in between any of these movements to reset, please do so. We're gonna get straight into the opposite side. So opposite leg rises to sky. That's right, I just had to look at you to make sure I'm doing the right one. <sighs> Tiger girl <laughs> knee into chest. <laughs> Step the foot between the palms, crescent lunge. It always feels easier once you know where you're going now. Stay for the in-breath and on the exhale, we move into arrowhead. Neck is in line with the spine. Still a strong bend in that front knee. Inhale to rise, four rounds. Exhale. Inhale. Following the breath. And we're really nice and active in that back leg, guys. One more, meeting back in your crescent lunge. Exhale, pivoting that back foot to a 45 degree angle as we enter extended pyramid pose. Right hip dials back. And just allowing the forehead to rest on the shin. And staying here for one breath. And on the exhale, we move into Virabhadrasana too. So shifting that back foot so it's parallel to the back of the mat. Deep bend in that front knee. 
And if you need to shift around here, shorten your stance, widen your stance, whatever feels good for you. It's usually about a leg's width distance apart in warrior two, your leg. One more breath. Exhale, flip the palm, reverse your warrior. Exhale, we move into extended side angle pose, whatever variation you took. And moving straight into the bind as you did so on the opposite side. Be here for two breaths. Exhale, slowly release. Still maintaining that nice deep lunge. Back foot comes back to the heel on top of the ball mount. So we're in the lunge position and then all 10 toes spin to the right hand side. Twisted Skandasana. And we'll hold here for two breaths. Exhale, release, coming back through our low lunge and making our way into high skandhasana. Or straight into low, using the block if you did so on the other side. And gently placing the sitting bones down. And I already know I need to readjust here a little bit. So if you need to, that's completely fine. It's not the prettiest transition in the world. It really is. Very yeah. <laughs> it really <laughs> I kind, of felt like I, I kind of felt like I was gonna let out a burp. So I was like, no. Yeah, sure, a burp, Courtney. All right, so setting up. So we'll go into our side bend first. So taking that right hand down, maybe even coming to the forearm. And those left fingers drape over, maybe catching the pinky toe edge. Spinning that heart to sky, still grounding down through that left foot. And exhale to come back up. Straight into the bind if you took it on the other side. So taking that left arm, wrapping it around the front shin and dialing that right shoulder back. Stay for one breath. And on the exhale, we slowly release. So I don't know about you, I'm feeling pretty open now. So I think it's time to go into our peak pose, compass pose. So we've got a few options, but you can move into the center of your mat. So we're going to start where we began, always ending at the beginning. So taking the soles of the feet to touch and always noticing how different you may feel from how you started to where you are now. And we will take, we'll leave that right heel to where the groin is. And start off with the first variation. So we'll take the sole of the foot into the inner upper arm. So it's kind of like you're cradling a baby here. Nice and slow movements from side to side. And this might be where you're at today, guys, and that's completely fine. Take one more from side to side here, coming back to stillness. And if you are ready for a little bit more, we'll go into our second variation by grabbing the pinky toe blade edge with our right hand and just trying to grab, well not grab or shift that left knee over the left shoulder like so. So you'll take that left hand to claw the earth and you might be down here, you might be up here, everyone's different and that might be enough for you today. And you can have a play with spinning the eye gaze to the back of the room. And for the full expression of the pose, we begin to extend the leg, torso spins, heart to sky, flexing through that left foot. And we'll stay here for two breaths wherever you are and being okay with where you are. And exhale to release, always coming back through the way you came very softly. And let's just quickly take our legs extended in front of us for a moment. You might like to melt down in a nice little forward fold. 
or you might like to stay up in a dandasana staff pose position whatever feels good for you we're only here for a breath and on the exhale we reset moving back into our starting position only this time it is the left heel that comes towards the groin in your half butterfly position and we take that right foot place it into the inner arm of the left cradling like a baby a very stiff baby <laughs> And let's just take another two like this. And we'll take that pinky toe blade edge with the left hand and trying for the second variation, right knee over right shoulder. This is definitely my more open side, so it feels a little bit easier for me here. And this might be where you're at. Hello. <laughs> Hello foot, it's very close to me. Okay, now full expression of the pose, taking that left hand to the pinky toe blade edge, taking that right hand to grip the earth if it wasn't so already. And we spin the torso heart to sky, flexing through that foot. And we'll stay here for two breaths. Still breathing in and out through the nose and exhale to release and let's just hug the knees into chest wrapping the forearms around one another closing down the eyes here and just allowing the effects of the pose to marinate and just being with where you are and not dwelling on what did or did not occur And still with your eyes closed or with a soft gaze, however you'd like to get there, making your way to a flat back position. And taking any shape here, you may like to complement your practice before we move into our final resting pose. I would recommend happy baby, grabbing the soles of the feet. And perhaps extending one leg out long, opposite bent, and then moving over to the other side. Just having a play with your baby here, always doing it with a smile on your face. And just spending as much time as you'd like in this position before zipping up through the thighs toes to sky and with control beginning to lower all the way down to your final resting pose your shavasana and just making sure all your props are out of the way so you can Allow the feet and the hands to completely soften and drape to all four corners of the mat. Completely letting go of the breath here. And allowing yourself to be breathed. And the hard work is over. And this is your time to enjoy to be. I'll let you know when your time is up. And because you guys are at home, I do always encourage a longer Shavasana. Though if it is time to move on with your day, with your night, slowly begin to bring awareness back into the physical body as 
you perhaps take arms up overhead for a nice juicy stretch rolling over to your favorite side using your bottom arm as support pausing here for a moment still with the eyes closed making your way to a seated position to close our practice crossing the legs taking the hands in prayer thumbs to sternum slight bow of the head and always acknowledging the effort that you have made to turn up to practice and giving yourself this time and always and most importantly bowing our heads to the practice that cultivates peace and has brought all of us together here namaste yogis thank you so much thank you Thanks a lot.